With that being said, we, ha we will be welcoming uh, Sherry back on the stage again to give us another presentation about uh, LiftMaster's safety. So uh, give a hand for Sherry. All right, wrong presentation. Um, basically, we have a group of team, uh, our team called the Safety Ambassadors, and the Safety Ambassador for this area, is, her name is Shelly Perry, and unfortunately, she's doing double time right now with the gate safety as well, which I'm gonna kind of go over today. Uh, so she was, she's, in different, she's in a different state, so <laughs> she can't be in two places at once, so I'm helping her out and covering her presentation for you. So, um, our big safety program kicked off about a year and a half ago with our, our residential garage or opener uh, product line, and it's our don't chance to check it. So, oh, that's right. I'm in control again. All right, so the don't check, chance it, check it program is all about making sure that all of our customers are safe. So we did a bunch of research and we discovered that one in 15 garages out there don't have the required safety devices or they might have some wear and tear that means that they're not operating at their best. Um, the other thing is, is that most of our customers, 70%, are actually using that door as their main door to get into their home. So we want to make sure that it is as safe as possible. So we started this program to help bring awareness to the consumers that they really need to pay attention to this very large door that they're going in and out of every day. And we want to bring that business to you to make sure that you're helping them have the safest products that are out there. Um, so one of the things that we created, oh, and I didn't bring it. Frank, can you grab those two on the corner there? I'm sorry, I was not prepared. All right, so one of the things that we created for you was these checklists. And these checklists are really nice. Um, this one is the garage door and opener safety checklist. And if you look at it, you can see that there's a bunch of different things that it's going to ask you to look for to make sure that you have the best installation and the safest installation for your consumer. And it'll, they're green, yellow, and red. And green means good to go. It's been installed properly, it's working properly, you're good on that point. Yellow means, you know what, you might have to, it works right now, but that's not something that you're probably gonna have to replace soon um, or is a little on the iffy side. And red means fail, it needs to be fixed immediately. And by going through this checklist, you can actually work with your homeowners and to explain to them why they need to either fix something or to buy something new. All right, so this is kind of helping you walk through the, to make sure that they understand all the different pieces of that garage door and its operator to make sure that they have the safest product out there. So these are really nice, and you guys can get these. These are our checklists that are in a binder. They have copies. You leave a copy with your homeowner. You keep a copy for yourself. So you can show, especially if you're, uh, you find a, an opener out there or a door, whole system that is totally unsafe, fill that out, hand that to them, keep a copy in your file that if something ever happens, that you've got that record that you've told that homeowner that they've got an unsafe operator, kind of helps you out as well. Um, so that's one of the nice things, and you can get these from us. We've created this as a tool for you to have. Uh, so the three-step uh, safety check is uh, that you want to always ensure that the photo eyes are installed properly. So photo eyes, because photo eyes are to save people, not things, need to be installed at six inches above the ground, no higher. So you don't, if you see something where they're installed higher, you need to flag that, that is wrong, that should be fixed. Um, the other one you want to check is that um, you take something that's a six inches high and you block that photo eye and you want to make sure that when you press the a remote control or the control panel that that door re reverses immediately and doesn't close. Uh, and then the third one is you want to lay a, something like the hard, like a block of wood that's uh, one and a half inches or taller on the ground and you want to close that door. It should reverse on that one and a half inches. If it doesn't, that operator is unsafe and needs to be adjusted and or replaced. All right, so those are the three major things that you're gonna be looking at. That checklist goes through a bunch of other um, uh, items with regards to the whole entire system, the door, the track, everything. So you wanna use that to make sure that you are always doing a safe installation and that the installation that you're working on is always safe. 
Um, and like I said, we do have the free tools. So we've got these booklets. You can order these uh, from us as well. Um, we've got safety pins. There's a sticker for the garage walls. Not, not, a lot of people don't like those, but that's their door hangers to remind them that they need to be safe. Um, we even have coloring books for the kids. So if you want to get the kids' awareness up there and hey, give them the coloring book because they're going to want to talk to Safety Cat and talk their parents into getting a new opener because they're going to be unsafe. So you can get the kids involved in helping you sell. It works, by the way. My niece loves the coloring book. Um, like I said, we do have safety ambassadors. So they're located strategically throughout the country. Um, their primary goal is to um, promote the Don't Chance a Check It program and to make sure consumers are aware. So they are at your disposal for doing home shows, helping to do safety training, whatever you need. They can provide you information. They can provide you all these safety tools. They can explain how they work. Your safety ambassador, as I mentioned, is Shelly Perry. She's out, out of the Chicago area, so she is available. Um, just work with Dennis. Um, and Service Spring, and if you need some assistance from a safety ambassador at your location for something, um, we're happy to help. Um, and that's her phone number and email. It's Shelly, with no E, um, Perry at liftmaster.com. Um, the other thing is, is that it's, on the residential garage or opener side, it's very easy to get safety certified. And you can visit training at don't check it, uh, don't chance to check it's a, I believe it's a 10-question uh, thing to see what, you know, what your knowledge is about doing safe installations. And once you're registered, you're eligible to get this Don't Chance It, Check It by your dealer locator uh, listing at our website. So, and we're promoting this with consumers, so that's going to mean something to them. They're going to know that you're going to do something that's a safe installation in their home. So, Also, once you do that, oh, let me go back. Um, once you do that, it's going to give you the information on how to order all of these special tools um, to help you promote it. So that, that's once you do this registration, you'll get the information on how to, you know, order more of these um, uh, booklets. The, the, the coloring books are really nice to hand out to the kids at a home show, all that kind of stuff. You can order it directly from our, our safety site. So any questions on the residential garage door safety? Sure. As long as you don't fix it? Oh, the question is, what is the liability if you do the checklist and the homeowner doesn't want to do anything? My recommendation is you don't touch that door opener. You don't touch that system whatsoever, because the last person that touched it and did any kind of repair to it is responsible and liable. So if you do that, you walk away. If they don't want to fix it, you walk away. I know it's kind of hard to walk away from business, but you're protecting your business and your reputation, and I would recommend not doing that. All right? Okay. So the next one we're going to talk about is some new stuff that's coming out. So as Frank mentioned earlier, in 2010, our commercial door operator um, line was updated by UL325 so that we had to do a monitored uh, safety device. Um, the gate operator industry is going to the same route. So UL325 and the ASTM F2200, I believe, is a standard. It's somewhere later in the presentation, um, is also being updated for gate standards. So, existing UL325 for gates is there are four vehicular classes. Residential, commercial, industrial, and restricted access. Restricted access is like a high security, military, or a maximum security prison type thing. Um, and they used to have different acceptable entrapment zones, depending on what the classification of the site was. So, um, they've always required two independent entrapment zones per every um, entrapment zone area, you always had to have two things covering it. They just didn't have to be monitored. So the other one that we talk about is entrapment devices, um, which are type C. That's inherent force limiting, um, the adjustable clutch, and inherent pressure relief device. The one thing I want to bring up here 
is that the clutches on LiftMaster operators are not, um, they are not approved as entrapment devices, so you can't use our clutches. So that's something that I just want to make for LiftMaster that's being done, so that's not a valid one. What will change in 2016 on that UL325 is that the B1 and, and B2 uh, uh, devices, which are your, um, your photo eye sensors and your edges, now must be monitored on gates. So every entrapment zone must have a monitored uh, device on it. So you can't just add a device that's not monitored anymore. It has to have a monitor. That is a, a total UL325 change. Um, and then the type E devices, were, which are, I think they were an audible alarm, are no longer valid. The other big thing is in the next one. Oh, um, acceptable entrapment protection by the different class. So you used to have that residential, commercial, industrial, and security. Now all of them require it. So what that means, and it doesn't matter what vehicular class you have anymore, you have to abide by having a monitored device. The inherent sensing, which is like when it touches, that one's one. You now your second one has to be either a photo eye or uh, an edge or something that, that is monitored in order to make that a safe uh, system. So the other change is they changed some of the dimensions. You're going to have to be really careful about a lot of these. I'm just showing you the, the, the photo eye ones here. So the sensors for a gate cannot be any higher than 27 inches, and they can't be any further than 5 inches from the plane of the gate. All right, so that's one um, uh, thing that you're going to have to change. It used to be a different dimension. There are also a lot of dimension changes, and I don't list them here, on the, um, the actual physical gate itself. So I'll give you a couple of examples. If you have a moving gate and there's um, barbed wire on top, that barbed wire can has to start six feet or higher. Can't be any lower than six feet. If you've got tape, the barbed tape, uh, razor wire on top, it has to be, it can be no lower than eight feet on that moving gate. Um, pickets at the bottom of an edge have to be flush. You can't have anything, you're going to have to put another uh, piece of metal or something across that so that something can't get stuck. That's a new, that's a new rule. Any, diff, um, in a moving gate, anything that's t uh, more than two and a half inches, so I can stick my hand in it two and a half inches, needs to be meshed. So if you've got a beautiful ornamental gate with pickets that are four inches apart, that you're going to have to put mesh in there, that it has to be meshed. Now that is a new rule. So those are some of the things that you need to kind of pay attention. We are doing gate safety training throughout the country. I believe they just had one in Detroit. Um, and the next one in this area is July 8th in Columbus. And I believe there's one in Chicago on the 16th. But if you are interested in doing a gate safety training uh, with LiftMaster, we're providing this uh, for everybody, for all of our customers. That's the 8th. July 8th is Columbus. I think it's the 16th, July 16th. But if you're interested and in you're going, or if you're on, on the webinar and you're from a different area and want to know what's in your area, um, please give LiftMaster a call. You can call me directly. Um, or call Service Spring and they can get a hold of me and we can get you a schedule of where the gate safety training in your area is. But we're going to be doing them throughout the country, making sure all of our customers are aware of these major changes that are going on for gates. Um, uh, okay, so one of the things, so I did, the, I had to do this gate safety training. I did it uh, last month. And one of the things that was very interesting to me was that UL325 and it's ASTM F2200, it's code. It was adopted by the International Building Code in 2009, the Fire Code in 2009, and the Inter in, um, International Residential Code in 2012. That means that if you're doing installations that aren't doing at least the two, entrap or the two devices per entrapment zone, monitored or, or otherwise, you're not meeting code. Now, whether or not the area is Monitoring that and making sure that people are meeting code is one thing, but if you're doing this, you're not meeting these codes if you're, if you're not following all your different entrapment zones and making sure that they're all safe. So I kind of, I was surprised by that. I'm like, okay, well, 
just because UL 325 didn't make it mandatory, do these codes exist? So if the question that I was getting um, and that the, the uh, teacher was getting in the, uh, in the safety training was, well, what if the guy down the street quotes a cheaper because he's not quoting all of this stuff? Report him. If you report it to the building codes and you report it to them, they have to look into it. So you're, if you're doing the right thing by making it safe, that's the right thing. If, if there's a, uh, somebody down the road that's not doing a safe installation, report them. They won't get the job. You will. So it's kind of rude, but everybody should be doing safe installations. My opinion. Um, oh, another goofy thing. So we're here to help on the gate safety training as well. So remember that nice booklet I showed you with the safety checklist? We've got one for gates as well. So there's a gate checklist here. The nice thing about this one is on the back side, they did some really nice illustrations on what to look for to make sure that you're protecting all of the entrapment zones in a gate installation, a, a typical gate installation. So it's pretty nice um, if you want to come and look at this. But again, you can um, use one of these, check it. You can actually go up to an existing site and let the, the, the property manager know hey, your gate installation isn't safe, and here's why. And you can go through this with them. We've got a guy that I was talking to that's already doing it, and he didn't have this checklist. So he figured out what the new rules were, and he's been going around his whole area and just letting the property managers know that their, their installation isn't safe and what it'll take to get it up to, to be safe. So. so we do have all of the kinds of stuff that you can get from us as well. And again, work with Service Spring and Dennis and we can get you these materials for the gate safety as well. There's our checklist. Works pretty much the same way, has the red means good, yellow means probably gonna need to be fixed soon, and, and, the, red, or the, yellow, and the red means fail. So, works exact same way. Um, which brings to your question earlier, um, as an installer or technician, is your company liable? If you serviced it last, you will be included in the lawsuit. It does not matter if you did the initial installation. If you serviced it or touched it, you will be included. Just going to throw that out there so you are aware it pays to be safe. All right? Any questions? Now, this was just a really quick, short version of our gate safety training. The program itself is pretty in-depth, and you will get quizzed, and you will get certified if you take the, the gate safety training. So I, if you're in this business, I highly recommend you at least attend one of our gate safety trainings. All right, thank you. <laughs>